Hi, today is February 25th. We're continuing to walk through the Bible, answering the questions, who am I, who is God, and what the heck are we doing together? Went to a funeral today, and a man that I've known about, I have to say, I could have said I, I know him, but I didn't really know him. I knew him as somebody who smiled and was very friendly and very kind to me as a greeter at church and somebody that I have known for many, 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 many years. But as I heard about his life, I realized I didn't really know him. I didn't know him in his home. I didn't know him in his, uh, his work. I didn't know him in his town. I didn't know him. He didn't know me. So I want to encourage you to go a little bit deeper. Understand, number one, who you are. And most of all, understand who God is. We think we know him, but do we really? Do we know him in all of the facets of his beauty, in all of the things that he is involved with? Do we know him as the judge? Are we fearful? Do we know him as the father? Do we come in and sit in his table, at his table, in his house? Or are we? do we know him as a master, maybe even a slave master, uh, somebody who drives us to be to be better, always being better. How do we really know God? The best way to know God is to know his heart, and the best way to know his heart is to know his word. I want to encourage you. These videos aren't exciting. They, you know, they don't uh, appeal to all the visual, um, you know, the things that we normally think of as, oh yeah, this is a video that I would love to watch, but it's just a constant, continual reminder and a continual walk through the Bible and just talking about who God is, because if we know who he is, we'll know ourselves better and our relationship with him will become so much better. And I'm, because of the funeral that I went to today, I am more more and more committed to not only knowing God better, but knowing the people in my life better, knowing who they really are and asking them questions and sitting down and hearing their stories and asking them to, to go with me and walk with me in my life. And I want to encourage you to do the same. So we're reading from Leviticus chapter 16, verse 29 and chapter 18, verse 30. Mark chapter 7, 24 to chapter 8, verse 10, Psalms 41, 1 through 13, and Proverbs 10, 15 through 16. And I just really want to talk about Leviticus law, talks about uh, the what we call Yom Kippur. And it was the one day a year that the priest was to go in and to sacrifice for the, the sins of the people. And it was once a year, it was a very serious day, and God has given them lots of uh, offerings and purification rituals, and that day is going to be a Sabbath, a day of complete rest. And it says you must deny yourself, which means it's a day of fasting, giving up food. And then God will make you right with him. Now this was once a year, it was temporary, it didn't really work for a long time had to do it year after year after year because it was a physical representation of what Jesus was going to do on the cross. And at any point in time when Jesus came, he could have backed out of the plan. He was a human. He came in humanity and he knew the Father. He knew him in all facets of his life. He knew him before he came and he was reminded in his life uh, of what he, you know, what his father was. Um, and it, and it, let me go back to Leviticus at the end of chapter 16. It says that Moses followed all these instructions exactly as the Lord had commanded. Um, when we get to verse 7 of chapter 17, the people must no longer be unfaithful to the Lord by offering sacrifices to goat idols. And the original talks about goat idols being goat demons. And I just want to mention, I know we don't talk about it very often, but there is a spiritual world. There is clean and unclean spirits. There are angels that have rebelled. 
And there's a lot of things that we don't understand about the spiritual life, but the Holy Spirit gives us a discerning of spirits. We can, by the power of the Holy Spirit, understand that this particular activity is instigated, maybe uh, influenced, um, propagated by a demonic spirit. And the worship that they were involved with was demonic. The New Testament talks about the doctrines of demons, the teachings of demonic influences in the lives of people. So we want to be aware because the first the first step of no of uh, fighting and defeating your enemy is to know them and know what their strategy is. And then it talks in verse 11 about the life of the body is in its blood. I've given you the blood to purify you and make you right with the Lord. And Jesus' blood made us right with the Lord. And uh, it was an exchange. His blood, his blood that was immortal and clean and sinless for our blood that was mortal and that had sin in it. You know, the, the body is provided for by the blood, but the blood also carries the things that are impure. And uh, we are clean because of God and his sacrifice for us. So there's a, a relationship of God, me, and us in this particular instruction of verse 18. I am the Lord your God. So that's our God. I am. Remember, he, he says he is the I am. He's the Lord. That's our relationship, your God. So do not act like the people, this particular group said, the people in Egypt. I'm going to say the people around you in the culture of the world where you used to live or like the people of uh, Canaan, where I am taking you. You must not imitate their way of life. You must obey all my regulations and be careful to obey my decrees for I am the Lord your God. If you obey my decrees and my regulations, you will find life through them. I am the Lord. There are so many influences in our lives, so many voices that we hear, media, huge uh, videos and movies. I never in the world dreamed when I was a young girl what influences there would be in the movies. And Derek Prince, a long, long, long time ago, said uh, that he believes that demonic influences enter through the things that you see, and that is in the movies and the TV programs. And that was a long time ago before it got even more evil, in my opinion. But you let the Lord tell you what influences that you should allow or not allow in your life because he is our Lord and he cares for us. And then it talks about sexual sin in the New Testament. I believe it was Peter reminded us that any sin that we commit outside of the body is bad, um, but sexual sin is a sin in our own bodies and it uh, basically is a sin against ourselves. And the old law, the Leviticus law, will will verify that. It's uh, This would violate yourself in verse 10. And I'm not going to go through the sins. Read it for yourself. It is not PG rated. Um, there's a lot of perversion. There's a, there's a spirit of perversion, which is just twisted and evil and defiled. And, you know, whatever imagination man has, it seems like um, it's just no limit to what we can do to hurt ourselves. Um, and it talks about this being an, a wicked act. Don't defile yourself. And don't offer your children to the God of Molech, which is a demon God. For you must not bring shame on the name of your God. I am the Lord. And it talks about homosexuality. It's a detestable sin. There's another virgin, version that says abomination. And it talks about idolatry as being an abomination. It's in that same category, but it's a sin against your own self. And don't defile yourself in any of these ways. And then it talks about the land being polluted and defiled. And he said that I'm going to vomit these people out. The land is going to be uh, cleaned and cleaned out. All of these detestable activities are practiced by the people of the land, but not you. You are different. You are my people. And you are not to imitate the ways of the world. 
So obey my instructions and do not defile yourselves by committing any of these detestable practices that were committed by the people who lived in the land before you. I am the Lord your God. And that's from verse 30 of chapter 18. So in I'm reminded what Jesus said. It's not what goes into your mouth. It's not what you eat because the Pharisees were complaining. They didn't wash their hands. He said, it's not what you eat, but it's what you put in your heart, in your spirit. Be careful what you put in your spirit. And I know as children, sometimes we've had things put in our spirits that we had no control over. But we, uh, but we now have the authority and we now have the control. And we now have the power to, to get rid of those things. The spirit of fear and the spirit of perversion and the spirits uh, that have been such an influence on our lives. It, we have that authority now. I know that I had a vision of a spirit of fear in my life. And I, I saw it as a guard dog. And then I realized by the power of the Holy Spirit, it wasn't a guard dog at all. It was a wolf. and it was, But it was familiar to me. And it was, it, it was deceiving me to think that it was protecting me. But actually it was keeping me in my own house, in my spiritual house. It was keeping me locked up, keeping me self-centered. And then one day I asked the Holy Spirit, you know, because I, I went through an, a ministry of deliverance, but I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, help me to see this in reality. So many times there's such a veil over the spirits that are influencing our lives. And I said, help me to see this as it really is. And I immediately saw it as a viper, as a snake. I cannot stand snakes. It was easy for me to say, go, you have to leave my house right now and don't come back. I tear up the agreement, I rebuke um, the influence that you have in my life, and I no longer want to be controlled by the spirit of fear, and it left, and it left for good. I have to keep uh, focusing on not letting it back in, because it'll knock on the door, almost, you know, like a lot, it'll knock on the door, but I, no, I might be afraid today, but I'm not accepting the spirit of fear into my heart any longer. I guard my heart, very, very protective of my heart and never look at things that will make me afraid on purpose. Um, and God is helping me. So Jesus, there's so much to talk about with Jesus, Mark in chapter seven. And there was a woman who heard about him and her, her little girl was possessed by an evil spirit or an unclean spirit. Now this is a little girl, a very little girl. And that's usually when the demonic spirits will attack, they will attack children. Because children have no, they have no power. They have no strength. And uh, she begged, the mom begged Jesus to cast out the, the demon from her daughter. And Jesus said, because she was a Gentile, he said, basically, I didn't come to help you. I came for, for the children of, of Israel, the Jewish people. And she said, okay. Um, because Jesus said it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. Now that would be very insulting. She could have taken offense and just gone with a huff and a puff. But she believed in Jesus and she believed in the authority that he had in God. And she said, that's true, Lord. That's humility. That is so much humility not to pick up an offense. Even the dogs under the table are allowed to eat the scraps from the children's plates. She's like, okay, I don't expect everything from you. But even a scrap will deliver my child. And he said, whoa, good answer. And what he said in another version, another gospel, is that this woman has great faith. Even though he said she you know, wasn't deserving and she agreed, she said, you can still do this for my daughter. And he said, go home, for the demon has left your daughter. And when she arrived home, she found her little girl lying quietly in bed. The demon was gone. It was humility that moved God. And Jesus was asked to, to deliver the deaf and the dumb man. And he looked up to heaven and he sighed and he said, Ephatha, which means be opened. Again, he wasn't asking. He was taking authority. And he said, be opened. And the man instantly could hear and speak. And uh, then he fed 4,000 men. Uh, sometimes I got confused. Because I'm like, 4,000, they must have got the, the preacher must have got it wrong. But no, there were two accounts of Jesus feeding many men. 
And then Psalms talks about our God as being a rescuer, a protector, a nurse, a restorer. And then he says, I know you are pleased with me, for you have not let my enemies triumph over me. God is eternal. He's a life preserver. He gives us life. He preserves our life. I want you to have a blessed day and join me again tomorrow.